Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to me today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker, and I am here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. And today, we look at breaking open, finding a way through spiritual emergency by Jules Evans and King Reed. Visionary states have played a crucial part in our social and religious heritage. Such states are perfectly natural, although they can be painful and disturbing disillusions of the ordinary ego and ordinary reality. Properly managed, they have a natural tendency towards positive resolutions and should be supported rather than suppressed with medication. It should not be confused with conditions that have a biological cause and which require medical treatment. But modern psychiatry and psychology have little interest in or understanding of these non-ordinary states. Is it really possible to reliably distinguish between spiritual emergencies and other types of psychosis? Can one separate conditions that may have a more biological cause from those which don't? Many mental and emotional problems seem to arise from a combination of genetic, biological, psychological, and socio-cultural factors. And we still know so very little about consciousness and how it behaves. But we can say this, many of the strategies and self-care practices which are contributors discovered and found helpful in their crisis, meditation, body practices like Tai Chi, love and connection to others, are increasingly found to be helpful, not just for those suffering from psychosis, but for all human beings. Our mental, emotional, and spiritual health is both created and treated by the culture we live in. Ours is dominated by the medical paradigm, which in its diagnostic handling of mental issues teaches us to grow up afraid of any abnormal experiences. When disturbing aspects of our being are treated from a place of fear, they become further disturbed and fear-filled as we attempt to eliminate instead of integrate them. Most mental health issues stem from isolation. We want so badly to be connected and understood, yet often we fear it just as much as we want it. I decided to shelf the spiritual reveals and focus on the fact that decades of repressed trauma had finally risen up, short-circuited my nervous system, and tumbled the architecture of the old self I have built on very shaky foundations. Validation, context, fierce kindness and acceptance were crucial. Trauma is one of the four portals to spiritual awakening, along with sex, with death, and with meditation. I would add to those physical nature and psychic nature, creative imagination, dreams, and synchronicities. John Wellwood says, the hard truth is that spiritual realization is relatively easy compared with the much greater difficulty of actualizing it, integrating it fully into the fabric of one's embodiment in one's daily life. But the overemphasis on the cognitive faculty in our culture and lack of purposeful spiritual narratives combined to inhibit spiritual emergencies. 
and exaggerate spiritual emergencies when they do arise. Spiritual emergency is simply spiritual emergence without a validating individual cultural context or containment. What could be a successful integrated initiation into larger self and reality becomes an intensely traumatizing, terrifying experience and a failed initiation, as Joseph Campbell would say. Instead of leading to transformation, it leads to bypass, to fragmentation or annihilation, even in a healthy self, because by definition, it shatters the ordinary operating system. Unusual experiences need to be honored, but we do need to be careful not to get lost or stuck in them. Whilst ideal integration of experiences can enable a healthy sense of self, a healthy letting go of special experiences is made much more difficult by a healthcare system that invalidates experiences that are felt to be important. The experiencer, service user or avoider may be forced into defensively clinging to their experiences as their battle for validation. We need to safely share our stories. Peer support in groups and as exemplars must be a basic, not an add-on. There are two basic motivating forces, fear and love. When we are afraid, we pull back from life. When we are in love, we open to all that life has to offer with passion, with excitement, and with acceptance. Evolution and all hopes for a better world rest in the fearlessness and open-hearted vision of people who embrace life. Part of the power struggle is around words and labels, psychosis, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, mystical experience. Graf's concept, spiritual emergency, our umbrella term, it means a messy, quasi-psychotic spiritual awakening which, if properly navigated and supported, can lead to greater maturity, to wholeness, and enhanced psycho-spiritual health. The term raises the difficult question of where to draw a line between spiritual and healthy experiences and psychotic and unhealthy experiences. There is a problem with the default medical model, a tendency to reductionism and an over-eagerness to reach for the prescription pad. It's not just psychiatry that is dogmatic. A religious community may be just as fundamentalists and negative in its interpretation of unusual experiences and as an unskillful psychiatrist. Rather than a battle for authority over the soul, which hardens into the over certain claims to knowledge. Can we as a society move towards a more open-minded and sympathetic pluralism, asking what helps people make sense of their experiences and then integrate them into a sense of wholeness? What helps the person live well? Please, do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it and read. Never stop learning. Thank you. Love and respect.